The Aldis Podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our ServiceNow series, where we interview the best and brightest of the industry to share their story, advice, and views on the exciting world of ServiceNow and digital transformation. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Today, we are very happy to welcome Ashish Atrey to the show. Ashish is a ServiceNow developer at MVP, and we've been looking forward to having Ashish on the show for a while now. Ashish, fantastic to have you here with us. Thanks, Mark. It's a pleasure for me to be a part of this podcast. Tell us a little bit about you and how you got into the world of ServiceNow. I have uh, six plus years of experience in the ServiceNow domain and currently I'm serving as a lead developer in HCL Technologies. And if I tell you about my roles and responsibilities, so I am a SME for integrations and service portals. So I started my journey as an AngularJS developer and uh, post two or three months for the AngularJS proje- uh, project, my mentor, I would like to call out his name, Anand Singhal, who introduced me to the ServiceNow. And then I started exploring the service now. So you've been really, really giving back to the community over the years. How do you find the time to give back? And when you wake up each morning, how do you pick on what you add to actually what value you want to add? Because there's so much amazing content coming from you and you're just so open to adding value within the community. I have divided my time in three, I would say, chunks. The first one or first half would be for my personal chores. And then second and third would be specifically for my professional life. So what I do once I start my day, so I first check on my emails and I complete all my tasks that are assigned to me. So currently I've been working with a team of good developers, which helps me out daily to uh, complete the things smoothly, I would say seamlessly. And uh, after, or I would say post business hours, I start uh, looking into the community. I start giving the answer to the community and uh, writing the blogs as per the problems that I've been facing in my day. So I try to create a blog on those problems, which me or my team is facing, and we have resolved successfully. I love the way you've got a conscious decision to say, here's my time. This is how it's broken up in terms of a tree, and you're adding value to the community. You're sharing your day, the insights, and you're fast-tracking people's learns. And it's also a really good medium to get people discussing, adding additional points, different phrases, all in a really, really good spirit of how you go about doing that. So today... It's such an exciting time, Tokyo Upgrade. I know you've been very busy with that. (laughs) Tell me about what you've been excited about. What can people expect? So I'm very excited about the Tokyo Upgrade. And me and my team is working on the Tokyo Upgrade for one of our strategic customers. So the best part, I would say, is the next experience UI and the data filtration. So currently, if you have seen the ServiceNow Classic View, you always find that there is something missing, some fresh look is missing. But with the next experience UI, they have just changed the paradigm from how fresh look it has, how intuitive it is, and you can do a lot of things which was previously limited or which you don't know that time or in the classic view. So with the next experience, it's an enhanced view and definitely the customer will gonna love it. And another thing is the data filtration. Every time we know about the ACLs, we use ACLs for the restrictions to allow access, but they have introduced the additional layer for the restrictions or for allowing the access to the application, so that data filtration. So I'm looking forward to work or to implement the data filtration mode. Tell us a little bit about the fresh look and feel and some of the aspects that you've been kind of blown away by. Let me take a step back. In Paris or earlier release, they have introduced, the ServiceNow has introduced the UI Builder. And the UI Builder is based out of your React and Web Components technology. Before UI Builder, the ServiceNow is using either the Service Portal and the old classic view, where there is a, on the left-hand side, there is Application Navigator, and on the right-hand side, you get the actual pane, where you can see all the widgets, all the components, reports, anything to everything related to list and forms. 
and the actual visible areas are less. If you would have seen the other tools, I won't take the name of the other tools, but yeah, in comparison to that, the view is less and smaller. But with the introduction of the next previous UI, they have changed the, I would say, whole look and feel, I would say, and explore application navigator content as well. So now you don't need to stick to your application navigator content every time. It's a collapsible and expandable automatically. If you need to jump onto any specific item, just click on that all button there and you are good to go and provide or search for the particular application. You don't need to live every time with that application navigator expanded. And when you talk about that intuitive feel, and it's probably maybe a little bit hard to articulate, but is there any examples that come to mind that people haven't got an opportunity on this yet, but they're really excited? How does this work? If I tell you about the intuitiveness, they have added the dark mode initially. In the classic view, there is a no dark mode. And now, you know, each and every tool which is present in the market comes and has been mo modifying or... Uh, revamping their cells to be accommodated with the dark mode. So one example would be the dark mode. They have enabled the dark mode within the Nexus CDS UI. And it's not stick to the dark mode, but if you would want to enable a different kind of branding within the native UI or within the Nexus Experience UI for yourself, then you can go ahead and uh, just configure those themes for you. For people going on this journey now, new customers and helping them with implementations, what can they expect some of the value? You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. So in terms of maybe they're not quite sure what's going to happen or what's going to happen to their work or how to interface with it day to day, and you're working with customers to help with this, is there anything that customers now need to be mindful for or maybe they can get really excited for? We have already shown this to our customer that Sanvisna has introduced the next experience UI. And to be honest, Mark, they are very happy and they are welcoming this the next experience UI change with both the hands. So they love the design. They are the new feature. So the next experience UI is, I would say, interface. But they have also introduced some good functionality within the Tokyo as well. As I have told you, the uh, data filtration. The another thing is, I would like to highlight there is, there is a custom URL functionality which is available already within the ServiceNow. But unfortunately, you would have to use the ServiceNow SSL certificate. But going from the Tokyo release, they have introduced one plugin. There you can add your uh, SSL or your company compliance SSL into the service now and which added to the load balancer directly. And you are good to use the company compliant load balancer, company compliance SSL certificate. So these are the new technologies which they have introduced and which I would enhance the overall experience, not in terms of the interface, but as far the functionality wise or the component wise. You're getting order up to grips with this. Everyone in the community is going crazy about it. So excited. Is there any areas for the future that you think that they can build on this or any recommendations that we feel we can add? So I've been working on the UI builder a uh, lot uh, from the two or three releases. I've been constantly learning about the UI builders. There must be a less properties to be added manually. Instead of that, there should be a, dra a drop and dra drag and drop thing be there in the property so that it can be easily configurable right now we need to write a lot of json property we need to remember a lot of json property to enable or to configure the uips theme and brandings but yeah this would be the one change that i will be looking forward in the coming releases in utah or in the bank Cooper. tell us a little bit about how your role has changed over the last couple of years and where do you see it, your role going and shaping in the future the best part about my job is, in my current job is work environment and the faith of my management towards me. So every time my, my main point is, or my main mantra is just to design what the customer is needing, no matter how much challenging it is, how much difficult it is, but at least you should try, you should give it, give it a two or three try just to create some functionality, which client or a customer is looking for. And the best part is if your management is supporting you and if your customer is holding a faith in you, then 
it's like a price for you. So that motivates me a lot to do it in my current working environment. When you look at the work that you're doing, you're segmenting it into tree, you're working with customers, you're adding your own content, you're reading, you're re researching it. Where do you see the low code citizen developer, citizen scientist, depending on how you want to speak about us, where do you see this going? So more people coming into the ecosystem, Bill, mm -hmm. Bill McDermott speaks about, you know, getting up to 250,000 people within that ecosystem over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Such an exciting time. You know that the platform has been changing continuously. And I would say this is the best to make it low code, no code, because most of the people or most of the, I would say the customer that who brings the requirement to develop within your service now, don't know about the coding. And if you could provide the interface where the user knows what needs to be done, they need to do a drag and drop. They need to do this checks. They need to click these buttons and they are good to go with their application to be on it. And I would say this would be a huge helping hand for the developers as well. Because if you are a part of the process, eventually you learn about the each and everything. When I started, when I started in the service now, I didn't know much about the service now. I started exploring each and everything. And eventually by the process, I learned each and every step for how the things work, how actual module works, how the subscription behaves, each and everything. So if you are a part of the process or you are going by the process, eventually you will get to know more about the tool and about each and everything. What advice would you offer to people who want to get more into mentoring and maybe take the leap like you have to sharing within the community, but a little bit hesitant because they don't necessarily want to put themselves out there? My advice to them is don't get afraid of anyone. So don't get afraid. Instead of getting afraid of anyone, don't get afraid of uh, yourself. So just get out of your comfort zone. You have a zeal to learn. So be passionate about what you are learning first thing. And if along with it, if you have a risk appetite to push yourself or push your limits to learn something good or to give back to the community, then you should keep on learning. Always be the part of the process. And it's, uh, by the time passes, you will be seeing yourself that you have achieved something or you are a good contributor towards the community. You've been listening to the oldest podcast, part of our Service Now series. I've had the absolute pleasure of chatting with Ashish Trey. Ashish is a Service Now MVP developer, and he's been giving us an overview about his journey from software developer, front end with an angler, to moving into Service Now, to doing his role now day to day, helping with strategic implementation with customers. We talked about his work within the community, how he divides it up between his own work, his research, and his sharing with the community. We talked about the Tokyo upgrade and talked about how it's fresh and intuitive and some of the exciting areas that customers can learn to expect. And we also talked a little bit about some of the areas that they can look to upgrade in, in the future and we finally finished off with advice to people and mentorship to come into the community don't be concerned what other people might think of you just look to add value Ashish thank you so much for your time today uh, it's a pleasure Mark uh, to be a part of your podcast thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldous podcast if you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe rate and review we are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.allthis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.